Hello, Milwaukee Covenant Church friends and family. Uh, welcome. Uh, if you're watching us on our Facebook page or our YouTube account, uh, welcome to you as well if you're not part of our normal congregation. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, it's been another crazy week with weather. I hope that you've been able to uh, find peace in everything that's going on uh, and that uh, God has been able to bless you in some way, shape, or form. Um, that's been my prayer for all of us these days is that we will just find God's goodness in all the craziness that's going on. Uh, and it's out there. Uh, we just have to pray and open our eyes to see it. So um, with that, um, check the weekly email for announcements. Um, to be announced on Thursday night next week, it all depends on rain and smoke and all the things that are that are contributing to us not being able to do that. So uh, just be watching the email for that. Um, let's open in prayer today. Father God, thank you so much for just uh, ways that we can somewhat be together via technology. Uh, and thank you that, that you've provided ways to do that. And we just ask that, uh, that your Holy Spirit rest with everyone today as they are watching this recording or whatever ways that they are connecting with you, God. I just pray that your Holy Spirit uh, rests with everyone today. Your love has rescued us, the cross delivered all our hearts from fear, our hope is here. You came to make a way, Jesus, you came to raise the dead to life, our song will rise. Oh, great and mighty King, you reign in majesty. Before your throne we sing, holy, holy, O great and mighty King, for all eternity, we bow with heaven and sing, holy, holy, This is our offering, our hearts before the risen Lord. All power in your name, Jesus, the one who saves me, lifted high. Our song will rise. Oh, great and mighty King, you reign in majesty. Before your throne we sing, holy Holy, O oh great and mighty King, for all eternity, we bow with heaven and sing, Holy, Holy Lord. Your glory fills this place, we shout unending praise. Forever, hallelujah, forever, hallelujah, your glory fills this place. We shout unending praise, forever, hallelujah, forever, hallelujah, your glory fills this place. We shout unending praise, forever, hallelujah, forever, hallelujah. Your glory fills this place. We shout unending praise forever. Hallelujah. Forever. Hallelujah. Oh, great and mighty King, you reign in majesty. Before your throne we sing holy, holy. Oh, great and mighty King, for all eternity. We bow with heaven and sing, holy, holy, O oh, great and mighty King, you reign in majesty, before your throne we sing, holy, holy, O oh, great and mighty King, for all eternity, we bow 
bow with heaven and sing holy, holy Lord. song called Yes I Will. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. I count on one thing, I count on one thing. The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. I count on one thing, I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now, you won't fail me now in the waiting, the same God who's never late is working all things out, you're working all things out, yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. I choose to praise. I choose to praise. To glorify, glorify the name of all names That nothing can stand against I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names That nothing can stand against And I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names that nothing can stand against I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names That nothing can stand against Yes, I will Yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days, yes, I will, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name, yes, I will 
sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show. your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, Jesus, the name above every other name, Jesus, the only one who could ever save, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken I will build my life upon your love it is a firm I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to God. 
those around me. You know, one of the great sermons that, probably the greatest sermon that's ever been given is uh, found in God's Word. And Jesus spent some significant time with his followers. He prayed with them, but and he, uh, he, uh, the big thing with him is he taught them. And at the end of Matthew chapter 7, the end of the Sermon on the Mount, we read this. Therefore, everyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation upon the rock. Father, today we thank you for just that, the foundation of the rock, the strong and firm foundation as we read scripture, as we we study and we learn more and more about you. And Father, we understand that you were pe- with people that had many questions, many challenges, many things they were trying to learn about life and about their, their relationship with you and other people. And you told them that you are the great, not only physician, but the great teacher. And so Lord, we thank you for the ability that we have to freely come to you in our time of prayer, to reach out for wisdom and direction. Father, we give you our praises and because you are a God who has done some phenomenal and amazing things. And, and it's so important for us to remember that, in particular at this time, not just the season, but everything that's going around in the, the year of anxiety of uh, 2020. So, Father, we we submit all those things to you. Father, specifically, we think about those in our own region that have been inundated with the, the wildfire fires. Bless them, Lord. We pray provisions for them. We pray that you might show us and, and maybe put us in touch of those that may need help. Father, we think about those in our own midst that are going through uh, surgical procedures <clears throat> and recovering from them. We lift up like a Deb and and Rich, and, and Amy, and, and uh, there's many others that are, have gone through surgical procedures and are uh, recovering from illnesses. Father, we lift all them up to you. Father, we pray for our nation, and in particular the, the elections that are coming forth. We pray for wisdom on knowing how we should vote uh, for each candidate. Now, Lord, I thank you that you're a God who is with us today but it's already in tomorrow. Lord, because you know what's ahead. And Lord, we pray that we might find the wisdom that we need in order to accomplish the tasks at hand in present, but also the things that we need to be prepared for in the future. So Father, we thank you for your love, your teaching, the foundation that we find in your holy word. And Lord, we lift up all these things to you and we are grateful for you in your name. Amen. The Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy
worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Golden rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Give you my 
heart I give you my soul I live for you alone Every breath that I take Every moment I'm awake Lord, have your way in me This is my desire give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone every breath that I take every moment I'm awake Lord have your way in me Hi, kids and families. Last week, we talked about how we go to church not just to make ourselves feel good, but because part of our purpose is to actually receive God's love and overflow with it back to God and to other people and to spread the good news of God's kingdom. When we come together as a church, as God's people, something good comes out of it. Something good that can come out of the kitchen where we are are cookies and you guys get to join me as we make some cookies today. So, come along. Now I think everybody knows that the very first thing you do when you're cooking is you wash your hands. When we trust in Jesus, Jesus cleanses us. He cleanses our sins and he cleanses our hearts. So let's get these hands clean and let's start cooking. The second thing we do when we make cookies is we preheat the oven. Heat in the oven is what makes all of the ingredients in the cookies cook into something warm and delicious and chewy, just like God's Spirit in us is what helps us as the people of God's church work together to produce this amazing love for God that shines out of us and reaches to the world. So now it's time to mix our ingredients together. We start by creaming together some butter and some shortening and I'm going to do it with some of the white sugar and some brown sugar. Every single ingredient has its own part to do. If I were to say, you know, maybe I'll leave out this egg because I don't feel like cracking it or maybe I don't have one in the fridge. What you'd find is that the cookies would turn out not quite right without all of the ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and add this egg in and I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla and then I'm going to let those things mix up. In the church, if we want to make something good, kind of like cookies, but even better, where we're spreading God's love, there are ingredients 
of things that as a church we need to come together and do. And we can learn about those in the Bible. The early church, right after Jesus had risen from the dead and gone back to heaven, they would get together and they would focus on listening to teaching about God's Word. The Bible helped them to understand who God is and who we are and how we can respond to Him. So I'm going to go ahead real quick here and add to this flour some baking powder and a little bit of salt. We're going to go ahead and add in the dry stuff here. You know, the dry stuff might be kind of like some of the other ingredients that the early church did. It says that they spent time devoting themselves to learning from teachers about God's Word. They also devoted themselves to prayer. You know, when we come to church, we learn from the Bible, right? We listen to sermons, we go to our Sunday school classes, all of those are ways for us to hear God's teaching from the Word, but we also spend time in prayer. And that's because we know that prayer is an important way that God's people can let God know, God, these are some of the things that we are offering up to you and asking of you, and also we want to listen to what your Spirit is telling us and teaching us. There's a third ingredient that the church did, and that was the early church. They practiced something that the Bible calls breaking of bread. You probably know it as communion. That's where everybody gets a little piece of bread and a little piece of juice, and we take it together. But we're not doing it as a snack. We're doing it because it has a very, very special significance. This is cookie dough, and it would taste good like cookies, but in my opinion, what makes cookies amazing, of course, is when you add in the chocolate. I feel the same way about church and communion or breaking of bread. When we come together and we take that bread and that juice, we are following the example and the instructions that Jesus gave us because it was the very last night before he died. And on that last night with his disciples, he took some bread, he broke it apart and he said, take this bread and eat it because this bread, it's just like my body that's gonna be broken for you. And then he poured some drink out and he gave it to them and he said, drink this cup. It's like the new covenant in my blood. See, the next day Jesus died on the cross. He died a broken, bloody death, but he did it because he knew that through his sacrifice, we could experience forgiveness and cleansing. So when we take communion together, we are together remembering the amazing sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And for me, that is one of the sweetest parts of what we do together as a church. It's one of the best ingredients of all. Now that all the ingredients are mixed together, we're gonna scoop them up and spread them out on the pan. Because unless we spread them out, they're just sitting here in the bowl and they're not doing any good for anybody. The very last part of being the church, the very last ingredient, kind of, is that we're not just made to sit here in the mixing bowl. We're made to be spread about throughout the world, to be sharing God's love with people, to be telling people about forgiveness in Jesus. And so when we are doing that, we're going to see that the Holy Spirit's heat makes something amazing come out. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these cookies in the oven and set my timer for seven minutes and we'll see what comes out. Okay friends, I want to show you three special cookies that I made. When I was mixing these ones up, I left out a key ingredient. This one I didn't add any baking powder to. This one didn't have any sugar, it just tastes like a biscuit with some chocolate chips in it. And then this last one I made without egg. And I'd say of all of these, this one maybe turned out the best. But it too, without that moisture of the egg, it just didn't, didn't flatten down like a cookie and also it's more crumbly than it should be. Now I hear the timer, so let's see what the good cookies look like. Now the key to perfect cookies is pulling them out when they're just starting to get golden brown like this and then you let them settle in and finish cooking the rest of the way on the pan for a few minutes. So as a church, if we don't have all of the ingredients, if we don't pay attention to scripture, if we don't listen and talk to God with prayer, 
if we don't remember Jesus' sacrifice, and if we're not involved in serving and showing God's love to the world around us, we're like those dry, crumbly cookies. We're not living into the good like God asks us to do. Here's a real cookie with all the ingredients, right? Look at how soft that is, perfectly chewy. Mm. Guys, this is good. As a church, when we do all of those things, have all of the ingredients for God's church, we can spread the goodness of God's love just like these cookies with all the ingredients and spread apart and cooked in the heat are able to spread good things and love. So I hope next week you tune in. I won't be here. I'm going to be out of town. But Pastor Bill is going to talk with you guys about that one last ingredient, about fellowship and what that means when we're part of the church together. See you guys next. Well, see you guys in two weeks, I guess. Bye-bye. Today we're going to be looking at a passage of scripture that we've probably studied before, and it, it's, it's a perfect one that's um, set up for the fall time. When we're looking at fall programming and all that the church is going to be about, and gosh, it's, it's a, certainly a big challenge right now in our uh, anxious time when things are all topsy-turvy all over the place. One guy says, you know, long-term um, planning for a church used to be to two to four or ten years. Now it's about 30 days. Um, but we're going to come back to the basics. And we talked about a little bit last week when we were talking about the difference between method and mission. You know, a lot of things we do at a church really isn't necessarily our specific mission. It's just a method. It's how we accomplish things. It's, it's our tradition. And so we're look, going through a series right now and really, we're coming into the second part of it, but I'm looking at it from this title of what we're about. And have you ever asked that question, what are we about? Now, at Milwaukee Covenant Church, if you've been here for a significant period of time, maybe you've heard our, our purpose statement of building relationships, serving community, and reaching the world. Well, it goes a little bit more in depth, and you know, what the church and the mission is about was really established some time ago in the New Testament church in Jerusalem. And I want to read just one verse, basically, uh, from Acts chapter 2. And this is after a really phenomenal experience that the Christians saw and the people that were following Christ saw uh, around them on the day of Pentecost. And it said after that, after they had one of the biggest revival experiences in the history of the church, 3,000, went. the church went from 120 up to like three, over 3,000 in one day. And then it says this in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled in awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. Father, I pray today as we go through this text that we might be um, really caught up and recognize that we're just not about a denomination or a local parish, but we're about specific things to carry out the mission, that we might understand what we are about. And so, Father, we pray your guidance through this text and through our time and our worship today. Thank you for the opportunity that we have, even though it's a little bit different than we're used to, uh, the opportunity to worship together in this format. We lift it up in your name. Amen. Years ago, there's one particular, in fact, there's many different commercials that stand out in my mind, but one of them was, the one I'm thinking about, it was about an airline company, and they're seeing about, uh, you know, to, for companies to use their services to reach their client. Well, the focus was upon this business. And I don't remember exactly what the business was about, but the boss grabbed all the employees together. There was probably, you know, 15 of them, 12, 15 of them. And they came in the conference room and they looked at the boss and they said, hey, you know, hey, buddy, or boss, hey, uh, Dave, let's say his name is Dave. Dave, what, what's going on? And he came into the conference room, and he was a little troubled, and he says, you know what, I just got off the phone with an old friend. 
an uh, old friend that I've done business with for a long period of time. And he had a problem. He had a question. He goes, I don't know what's going on with you. If, have you lost your focus? You don't seem to be doing the things that you, you used to do. And it kind of got me. And so the boss came back and he says, after that call, I began to think about it. And we forgot what we're about. We're about reaching out to our clients and serving, servicing them and giving them what they need. And so then what he does, he came and he went to each one of his employees and he handed out a handful of tickets. And what they are, they were airplane tickets. And he says, you're going to go get in touch with these people and you're going to get in touch with these people. And it went through the whole, um, uh, the whole army right there. And he says, this is what we're going to do because we need to remember what we're about. And then they asked him, he, they said, well, Dave, where are you going to go? And he goes, I'm going to go visit an old friend. You know, I thought about that. And, and when you, we, we come into the fall program, I mean, you know, we realize what are we about Every year we come into the fall and we're going to say, hey, we're going to be doing this and we're going to do this and, and that. And, and um, what are we about, though? What's the mission of the church? You know, last week we talked a little bit about that. And the mission and what we are about is not a denomination. It's not about a greeting time. It's not about, um, you know, all the different components of our service. But what we found out is that the mission of the church is to love God, to love others, and to share the gospel with other people. That's what the church is about. Now, it becomes more of a specific of the different components of the church, of how do we reach those different things, of loving God and loving others and, and reaching out to the gospel to other, pe other people. How do we accomplish that? Well, that's what we're going to be going into the next two weeks. And there are five different things that I'm going to identify in the next two weeks. And then we're going to talk a little specific about what we want to look at in a kind of a crazy mixed up world and for this fall program. Who knows when we're going to be together as a church in person. But these are still things that we're going to be looking at. And so <clears throat> when we look at the early church here, this was after a really important, really amazing time. It was called the, the Day of Pentecost when um, people, you know, I don't want to get into the specifics on this, but it was really a time when God showed up in an amazing and powerful way to the people. And it says this in verse 37 of, of chapter 2. It says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and they asked the question, what should we do? When you're talking about cut to the heart, it was basically they, they really said that God had showed up in a powerful way. You know, I think one of the most amazing things is when God shows up in a powerful way. Well, I can say it personally in my life, but what about in your life? When those times that God's unmistaken presence just happens to work out in a crazy way. It's like Mary has said it many times before, Mary Olson, those God instances. You've heard me talk about it many times. And I would imagine that in your life, there has been times when God has shown up. Maybe God showed up in such a way in your life at one time that you began to realize he's for real and he's got a message. And he's got the saving work of his son, Jesus Christ. And maybe it was when God showed up in a powerful way in your life that you said, okay, I believe that this is not just a coincidence, and I believe in the thing called the cross and what it stands for. And maybe it was when God's amazing presence showed up in your life that you made that decision to follow him. I think of a dear friend of mine vacillated with, is God really for real, and, and uh, do, I, do I follow him, or, or do I just go about it like it's some fallacy and some facade that's out there? But what made the difference in, in this person's life is when 
he, she saw, it's a lady, when she saw the reality of what faith in Christ did for one of her friends. And it made a difference in her life. And that was an amazing experience in my friend's life that she made the decision to ask Jesus into her life. And I would imagine that might have been a time in your life, or maybe not. Maybe that's something you're still on the fence. Man, I'd encourage you. I'd encourage you greatly to keep your eyes open for those God experiences when he shows up in a powerful way. You see, that was a situation in the early church. All these people were, they were watching these Christians go about their, their ways, and all of a sudden something happened in such a remarkable fashion that they said, this is something for real. And they made the decision to join the party of Christianity. And then what happens after that? You know, a lot of people say, you know, they, they come to the understanding or they think about after they, they make a decision for Christ, hey, everything is fine, I'm going to go about my own way. Well, that is completely wrong. That's just the beginning of your life. You see, that's when you start to, as we found out, the mission of the church or the mission of the Christ, a Christian is to love God, to love others, and then to share the gospel with other people. And what happened in this particular setting in Acts chapter 2, it started the New Testament church. And in fact, it was a New Testament church in, in Jerusalem. And they met together for a variety of things. And this is how they carried on their growth and their mission was to the apostles teaching and to prayer and to fellowship and breaking of bread and then later on in Acts chapter 13 they we find that they they got into missions and to service Kim uh, my wife she's quite the inquisitive person and I can't tell you how many times we're driving down the road and she's looking at some whether it be some office buildings that have the coffee shop and the in the lower section, and then there's vacant windows up, up above. And she's going, what do they do up there? We were driving through Chicago when I had just picked her up at the airport when we were in, living in Chicago. I had driven out there a couple weeks before, and she came out to, to join me at, and brought the kids. And, and when we were in seminary at uh, North Park Seminary in Chicago. And so I decided hey, we had to go to the grocery store and so we did and got some groceries and then uh, my mom was watching the kids. It was just her and I. And so I decided to take her down uh, downtown Chicago. Went by Wrigley Field. Went to the, by the Shedd Museum. We went to the Navy Pier. We were driving through and it was getting dark and she's looking up and she's hanging out. The, she's, you know, I'm a, okay, I was a little embarrassed because she's hanging out the windows looking up as a real country bumpkin looking at these huge you know, the Shears Tower and John Hack Hancock building. And, and she goes, what goes on in all those buildings? And I finally, at that point, I said, I don't know. Maybe they make paper airplanes or something in them. And uh, she kind of looked at me, and she knows I was getting a little maybe upset with her or annoyed, all her, these, uh, these questions. But you ever, have you ever driven down the road <clears throat> and you look at you know it's a church. And you ever want, have you ever wondered what they do there? I think about when Kim and I were in, <clears throat> in our sabbatical and we went to some various cathedrals <clears throat> excuse me, in, in Europe and looked at them. And, you know, over there, there's, you know, there's a lot of churches and, and big cathedrals, and they're beautiful. But they come basically, be, they're historical monuments. And many of them have nothing going on inside. And the one time I was out in South Bend, Indiana, Charlie Ryan was with me, and we went to the cathedral at Notre Dame on the Notre Dame campus. And we, we were looking, it was like a tour, and we're looking, it was, it was beautiful, it really was. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> the big pipe organ I fired it up and they played some music for a while and it was like, a, you know, an amazing concert. But is that what the church is about? Um, is there something more? 
In fact, when we look at a church, whether it be a major cathedral or there's a small hoodland Bible community church up at the mountain that's, you know, the whole building could fit inside our sanctuary. And uh, do you ever wonder about what's going on in those churches and what do they do? You see, we find out what the, I don't know what goes on in all these different churches, but it, the Bible tells us what should be going on. And we're going to cover four of them today. <clears throat> Number one, there should be the apostles' teaching. You know, when Jesus was leaving his disciples, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he, and he went on, it goes on in verse 20, he says, and teach them everything that I have commanded you. You know, we're all into learning, or at least we, I hope we are. In fact, I remember that statement. It says, when you're, you're through learning, you're through. You know, that's about life, and, but it's also about in our Christian life. I can't tell you how many times I've utilized Google, a Google search, or YouTube, and I found out how to fix a, a washer and dryer. I've, I've found out how to change a U-joint in a truck. I've, you know, f how to fix a pressure washer. It's all on YouTube. And those are great and useful tools. But one of the most useful tools that we have is God's Word. Because it teaches us what we are to be about. Not only as an individual, but also as a church. You know, when I said <clears throat> last week that uh, Jesus wants us to love God, to love each other, and to share the gospel. But specifically, we can fine-tune it a little bit more where it says that we need to preach God's word. You know, in that, word, that verse of Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says, they devoted. That means they purposefully spent time listening to teaching. Paul says in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, All Scripture is God-breathed, useful for teaching, rebuking, uh, correcting, and training in all forms of righteousness. And then in verse 17, it says, So that the man of God may be, it says here, underlying your Bible, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. We need to know what that is. We need to try to understand. And that's why the important component of the church, of what the church needs to be about, that's Milwaukee Covenant and the church right across the, you know, down the road or across the street, wherever we are, it needs to be about the apostles' teaching, about what God says in his holy word. Now, the second thing of what we are about, <clears throat> it says, now I'm going to take these a little bit out of order here if you're watching this and reading this out of your, your uh, Bible in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is not only the apostles' teaching, what we're about, but also the breaking of bread. And basically, it is what I, I'm going to understand this as the Lord's table or communion. You know, we have a lot of rituals in the church and I wrote a few of them down you know there's a ritual of the furniture in the church the pulpit well I don't use a pulpit I do a lectern uh, but you know some people some churches they they use a pulpit and it's very important piece of furniture um, there's other things you know there's a passing of the offering there is the greeting in the church there is you know, when you come into the church, do you sit on the right side or the left side of the congregation? Or what about this, the rituals? And this might be expanding a little bit much on that terminology of what a ritual is or maybe a tradition. <clears throat> what do you do or have you ever heard or maybe been a little bit uncomfortable when you come into your regularly you know, your regular church, and someone is sitting in your seat. Now, come on, be honest. Be honest. 
I know some people have been really upset about that, and we joke about it, but it is a real thing. I remember you, Kim and I, we sit up front, right up. I've, traditionally, we've always sat up front in the church, so we can, uh, you know, that keeps us from falling asleep. Now, that's not true, but, but I remember when all of a sudden Rich and Shirley Quam sat, sat in our church our pew right there and they said oh I'm sorry you know we're sitting in the in the pastor's church or a pew and I said hey that's that's don't worry about it well they didn't do it again (laughs) so I I don't know but here it is what the church needs to be about is the breaking of bread it's not a communion excuse me it's not a potluck it's communion And why is that so important? Because it focuses on what and why we're here. I was having a conversation with Mike, Mike Gibson. This is some time ago. I don't remember if it was outside at one of work parties or visiting them at their house. Anyway, he made the comment that really hit me and made me think about it because I could resonate with his his feeling. And he said, I can't wait to get back to church. And I expected him to say, so we can greet each other and handshake and coffee and cookies and fellowship and all that stuff. But he said this, I can't wait to get back to church to walk in and see the cross. Now, for those that may not know what, you're, what he's talking about, but if you come in to our sanctuary, there's a 25-foot cross right behind me. And he was part of the building of the church. And for him, he walks in, and there's a sense of awe. Because it's not just a f- piece of furniture. It's a symbol of what Christ did for us what Christ did for him, what Christ did for me, what Christ did for you of dying on the cross for our sins. You see, that's what the church is about too. It's not only teaching the word of God, but it's celebrating the acts of God, the acts of of Christ. You realize that communion is a time when we resonate with all that he has done for us. You see, because through that, it's not about me, and it's not about somebody else. It's about all. It's all about what he did. You see, through it, it's he took care of my sin. He took care of my need. He brought forgiveness and direction. And see, that's what the church is about, because it resonates with all its history. It's just not the, the, the fact that Milwaukee Covenant might be I don't know, 55 years old or something like that. It's about everything that Christ did to paint the road for salvation for me and for you. And that's imperative for the church to understand and to to hold to what it needs to be about. So the church is about um, the apostles' teaching. It's about the breaking of bread and third, it's about prayer. Now, you know, prayer, I'm not saying it's a glib response to something like, okay, we're going to go to a meal. I, I think about, maybe, maybe I shared with you some time ago when I was growing up, um, the prayer that we always said, except maybe on Sunday afternoon dinners when friends came over or family or guests came over because they put a pot roast in, some potatoes, and, and uh, so we'd have this big dinner <clears throat> But at that time, uh, our typical prayer that I grew up with was, God bless our food, and in Jesus', Jesus name, amen. And that was it. We said it a jillion times. And um, I remember one time, Kim says, you know what? And she, she came into that tradition, and, and she said, can we pick a different prayer And I said, sure, we can do it. My thought was, why? Because we've always done it that way. But prayer is is something a little bit not of a glib response. It's something that comes from the heart. And let me tell you this. I don't know if I've ever told 
told you this, I absolutely love to hear you pray. I know it's part of my job. It's probably written in as my job description that every potluck, the pastor or the youth leader or director or maybe even the worship leader needs to pray. I think we need to take that out of our job description. And I would like to hear you pray more. You know, sometimes we, don't, we think about when we come into prayer, we think, I don't have all the terminology. Well, if you're a living, breathing person that has been saved by grace, that God has reached out and touched you and you've experienced him, you are perfectly qualified to pray. It's not just the pastor's duty. I love to pray. I do. But I also love to hear you pray because in the midst of this, when we, I think there's about four things that happen when we pray. Number one, <clears throat> we identify who's in charge. It's not the chairman of the church. It's not the pastor. It's not even the coffee fellowship person. It's God's in charge. The second thing is that we acknowledge our gratefulness for all that he has done. You see, God has a string, a resume that is longer than we could ever imagine. Not only the, beginning, the creation of the world, but how he has reached out and showed up in your life and in my life. And so it, he's, he, we identify who's in charge when we pray. We show our gratitude as we pray. We also acknowledge how amazing he is. That he is, uh, you know, he's done all these great and phenomenal things. And fourth, um, we basically say he can handle this. And maybe it's not he can handle blessing the, the food, but maybe he can handle the challenge that I'm facing or that you're facing. And so I love to hear people pray because what I do is I hear, I listen about what's going on in their life that they acknowledge that God is in charge, that they are grateful, that they acknowledge that he's amazing and that he can handle the things that are out there because he's always, he's working today and he's already into tomorrow working on that issue. And so the church is, it's imperative to, to look at the apostles' teaching. The breaking of bread or communion because it reminds us of all that he's done. And then to, pr to pray because we identify that he's in charge. Not the denomination, not the pastor, not the chairman, not the head usher. But that he's in charge and he he's, has the ability to handle the situations that are going on in your life and in my life. I think about the, in a second... Um, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12, Jehoshaphat's prayer, and I, we've said it bunches of time, that we do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And man, that's, that's a repetitive phrase that we have, especially in this day and age that things change so quickly, that we don't know exactly what's out there, but God's already there, and so we pray to him. And so I love it. And recently we've been uh, <clears throat> going through this series on... Um, favorite verses and we had a gentleman that uh, worshiped here for a number of years him and his wife in fact his daughter and son-in-law are here it's uh, Bill Jackson and I think if Bill Jackson uh, his favorite verse a lot of people have r rode in and they said what their favorite verse was and so I picked one every Sunday for the last six months and we and I preached on that um, and so I think that Bill Jackson's favorite verse is um, Ma uh, Matthew chapter 21 verse 13 and where Jesus came into the temple and turned over all the tables for all the money changers and all the different things that weren't ultimately important and he says my house shall be a house of prayer and so it's imperative when we're talking about what we are about is what we're about what the church is about is the apostles teaching the breaking of bread or communion for prayer, and, <clears throat> and then I want to go to one other one that is not into, uh, into uh, uh, Acts chapter 2, but it's found in Acts chapter 13. It's the church of Antioch, because it actually it was the church of Antioch was the first time that 
the people were called Christians or followers of Christ. And the thing that set the Antioch church a little bit different is that they were involved in serving others. Not just themselves, but serving others. I don't know if I, I, I came across this story years ago. Maybe I shared it one time. There was a tour of, there was a big factory. And a lot of trains came into the factory for probably coal, I'm guessing. And materials would come in and trucks. And, and uh, they were, they were uh, having a tour, giving a tour of this large factory one time. And all the intricate workies. And it was, man, it was quite the place. And uh, at the end of the tour... One of the people that had taken it, they asked the question, he goes, man, this is really amazing. You know, how many tons of fuel come in and all the materials that come in on a daily basis? Um, and they stopped one minute and they said, you know, this is my question though. I see all this stuff coming in, but I don't see anything going out. And the tour guide kind of, kind of, embarrassed I guess and he said well you know the thing is it takes an incredible incredible amount of energy of effort and materials in order to run this huge facility and what happens it takes a, a huge amount of labor and power to run it and when it's all said and done there's nothing left over to go out now if that's the church that's wrong you see we can be really good at teaching God's word we can be really good at being about um, remembering what God has done and through the Lord's table and communion we can be phenomenal at, at praying. And what about serving others? You see, one of the things that I would guess, if we run by another church, whether it's a church in our community, whether it's a church that your fam, the other people in your family, your friends go, or whether it's a church that you go to, or whether it's, Milwaukee Covenant Church is that we certainly need to be about the mission and the mission is to love God love others and to share the gospel and then specifically what the church needs to be about is biblical teaching celebrating the, uh, the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ because that's what brings us together as, as Christians. We need to be about prayer. We need to be about service and serving others. And so when we come into our fall programming and where to go in an uncertain, a crazy world right now, those are the four chief components that we need to be about. Teaching, prayer, breaking of bread, and service. Now, there's one more that I'm going to talk about next week, and I, I certainly invite you to come back for that because on that one issue resides a lot of people and a lot of effort and a lot of giftedness and a lot of opportunity, but more importantly, a lot of possibility. So I invite you to come back next week as we fold up and we conclude of where are we going to go in the next four months or six months or whatever it might be so i invite you to come back let's pray father i thank you for an opportunity to to worship and and to be reminded of all that you're about lord i pray that you might continue to guide this church and guide us as individuals involved in this church so that we might continually show our love of you, our love of others, and our service in sharing your word with others. So Lord, guide us and bless us and challenge us. 
In Jesus' name, amen. before creation eternity in your hands you spoke the earth into motion my soul now to sin you stood before my failure Carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. So, what can I say? What can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. So what can I say? So what can I say? What can I do? But offer this heart, oh God. To you, so I'll walk upon salvation, your spirit alive in me, my life to declare your promise, my soul now to say. What can, what can I say? What can, can I, I do? do? But I'll offer this heart, oh God, God, completely to you. So what, what can, can I say? What can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand, my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned. In awe of the one who gave it all, I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. While oh, stand with arms high and heart abandoned, in awe of the one who stand my soul Lord to you surrendered all I am is yours all I am is yours all I am is yours so what 
can I say? What can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. Well, thanks again for sharing this time with Greg, Chrissy, and I as we've uh, enjoyed the opportunity in a unique and crazy world um, to preach God's word and to sing praises to him. And... Uh, so I, I hope it's been good and it's been a blessing for you guys. Uh, a couple things that are going on this week. Uh, we are going to, we are not, we don't have a good batting average right now doing our Thursday night worship. We're one for three uh, because of the weather. It's gone crazy and we've had to cancel those. So we're going to try that uh, one more time uh, this Thursday outside, weather permitting. So just watch your emails and um, uh, you can give us a call or, or text us. Um, to see if we're still going to be able to do it this Thursday. We're still planning it at 6 o'clock. Also, next Sunday, uh, or this Sunday, uh, we have a compassion event that's at St. John's down at Milwaukee. And so we're going to be putting together some sack lunches from 1.30 to 3. So if you want to come down and join us, that'd be great. Down kind of kinney corner from Milwaukee Lumber. And if you have questions about that, uh, check the email or uh, give Missy a call. Um, or one of us, and we can share that information. And then in the next, uh, I think it's a week from this Tuesday, the Women's Fellowship is going to be starting again on Tuesday. I think that's the 29th. And then the Monday uh, Fellowship will be starting uh, that on the 28th. And so look to your emails for all those changing events, those new things that are going on. So now what are we about? We're about not just singing and coming together, but it's about specifically reaching out for teaching, for prayer, for, for uh, serving. We're going to have another component we're going to uh, learn about next week. But it's about acknowledging our, um, our love of God, a love of others, and sharing the gospel with others. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, together God's people said, Amen.